today, I'd like to present control co-design using a nonlinear wind turbine dynamic model based on OpenFast linearization. This is uh, my outline today, the introduction, problem, that description, research method, demonstration, and discussions and ongoing work. First, I'd like to introduce offshore wind energy. Offshore wind energy is the wind turbine or wind uh, farm installed on the, in the offshore locations. There are some advantages and disadvantages of offshore wind energy. First, advantages are the size of land-based uh, turbine is uh, pretty much limited by multiple factors, including road transportation. However, uh, offshore wind turbines are uh, more freer uh, to those limitations. Offshore wind turbines can scale up for higher efficiency because of that, and winds at offshore locations are also faster and steadier than the land-based locations. There are some disadvantages, mostly regarding the cost. So uh, offshore wind turbines are very expensive. They are expensive in installation, operation, and maintenance. And uh, fixed foundation is a little bit cheaper and uh, in the offshore uh, wind turbine. However, uh, they are still uh, expensive, more expensive than the land-based turbines. And fixed foundation is only available for locations with shallow water depth. Floating offshore wind turbines are far more expensive because of a uh, floating platform and underwater mooring line and uh, electric wirings uh, in the uh, deep water region are also very complicated and expensive. So enabling um, offshore wind energy really requires to establish uh, economic feasibility. For example, the lowering the levelized cost of energy, which is very crucial uh, to enable large scale offshore wind turbine system development. I'd like to also introduce control code design. So what is the control code design? Control code design accounts for the control system as another design disciplinary do domain in addition to the physical system in the overall system design problem. So the control code design is a subset of multidisciplinary design optimization methods and it simultaneously design the physical and control systems that capitalizes on the synergetic design coupling between control um, discipline and the physical system discipline. However, in common practices in uh, wind turbine design still utilizes a sequential design, which is very conventional way of designing the physical system first and using the uh, result of the physical system design, uh, control engineer designed the control system, which may not produce system optimal solution. So uh, utilizing control co-design uh, enable further reduction of the cost uh, that uh, eventually enable the uh, lower cost for the uh, offshore wind energy systems. This is the problem definition of designing the uh, wind uh, offshore wind turbine. Here, uh, we are designing the fixed foundation wind turbine at uh, 15, approximately 15 megawatt scale. So our objective function is minimizing the LCOE. LCOE is cost divided by the annual energy production. And our design target are planned parameters and control trajectories. Our control trajectories include blade pitch uh, signal and the generator torque signal. Those two control signal controls the turbine behavior. And we also have uh, planned design variables, including hub height, rotor diameter, tower bottom thickness, tower top diameter, and tower top thickness. Uh, if we want to increase the plant design variables, we can add more design variables. However, that will increase the computational cost. So we are limiting here uh, only five uh, plant design variables. We also have constraints, including blade pitch rate, maximum generator power, uh, rotor speed, and maximum tower stress. So we use uh, control code design. So how do we solve the uh, control problem in the uh, concurrent design of uh, physical system and control system. So we use uh, direct optimal control in control code design. Uh, direct tra transcription enabled uh, comprehensive plant and control design exploration simultaneously. That is one of the breakthrough in the control code design. And recent 
DT-based uh, control code design method fully accounts for bi-directional plant and control design couplings. So uh, here uh, you see that uh, the control code design formulation here and direct transcription requires the direct access to the dynamic model derivative function. So here, this is the uh, dynamic uh, model and this constraint is uh, solving the dynamic model. And the derivative function of the uh, system uh, system states will be required to solve this uh, constraint. However, many system simulation models, including OpenFest, do not allow users to directly access the derivative function during the simulation. So how do we solve that issue? We use a derivative function surrogate modeling technique here. The OpenFest simulator can create a linear model at a given steady state. For example, we can get the state derivative as a linear uh, combination of A times uh, the state value plus B times the uh, control value. And the output can be C times uh, state and D plus D times control. And we also obtain the cost from uh, the wisdom, which gives uh, the cost evaluation model to us uh, for those uh, wind turbine models. So we solve uh, multiple operating points and multiple uh, plant design variations, and we uh, create massive number of OpenFest simulation models, and we get massive number of uh, linear models. And we train the derivative function surrogate model to provide dynamic model with uh, direct access to the derivative function here. And the input parameter for the DFSM are uh, five plant design parameters plus one uh, additional parameter, which uh, is the wind speed vector. So the, uh, in the input space, we have six dimensional space. And for the output parameters of the DFSM, we solve uh, ABCD matrices, uh, the linear, uh, linear model matrices, plus uh, operating point inform information. So the linear model is created at the operating point. So we need the operating point uh, state value and operating point control value. And we also train this model for uh, the cost model as well. And this is uh, the demonstration. The input condition for the demonstration case uh, are DLC 1.1 and DLC 2.3. DLC 1.1 is the normal turbulent wind from cut in speed to cut out speed. This uh, DLC is used for calculating the AEP annual energy production, and TLC 2.3 uh, includes the extreme operating cost, which uh, simulates uh, one of the failure modes calculation. I'd like to go uh, with uh, some results. Here first, uh, I'd like to go for uh, the control signal trajectory results. In the left-hand side, uh, you see the plate pitch angle over time. For uh, lower wind speed, or we see no blade pitch control is active. However, when we increase the wind speed, we see some uh, blade pitch control active. And on the right-hand side, you see the same uh, trajectory in different uh, uh, x-axis. So x-axis is the wind speed. So open loop control trajectory create a band of control signal near the line of constant wind speed case. So this is uh, this shows the effort of uh, our optimize, optimizer to optimizing the LCOE uh, by deviating the wind speed uh, a little bit uh, below or uh, higher uh, than uh, the control, uh, the constant wind speed case. Second control signal is the generator torque. Generator torque uh, it, in uh, on over the time is uh, shown in the left-hand side and achieving higher generator torque signal maximizes power generation. So uh, whenever we uh, increase the wind speed, uh, it all saturated uh, at the maximum here. However, when we have lower wind speed, uh, generator torque decreases and uh, it becomes a control signal. And for the generator torque over the wind speed, we see that uh, all the control uh, trajectories really overlaps with the con constant wind speed. So open loop uh, generator torque signal aligns well with the line of constant wind uh, case. That means that open loop control is not particularly useful for the generator torque control here. 
Oh, one of the interesting tra state trajectory is the rotor rotational speed here. Uh, as you see here, rotor RPM is regulated by the maximum rotor rotational speed constraint. And uh, on the right-hand side, you see uh, the rotor rotational speed uh, over the wind speed and open loop of uh, open loop optimal control fully utilizes the uh, rotor RPM deviations in, especially in the below rated uh, regime to maximize the power generation. So it can go a little bit above the uh, constant wind speed case, or it can go below the uh, constant wind speed case. So depending on uh, the wind, uh, wind profile, it uh, goes above and below to regulate the rotor rotational speed to maximize the power generation. I'd like to show you uh, the constraints here. Uh, first, top power top stress constraint over wind speed. Uh, they are well below constraint limit. So uh, it, uh, this constraint is inactive. As you see here, it's fluctuating uh, up and down. And that is because power is uh, vibrating uh, back and forth. On the right side, you see the tower bottom stress constraint over wind speed. As you see here, there is a small constraint violation occurred at around uh, the rated wind speed. And that is because of the convergence issue. If we could converge the problem uh, a little bit more, then uh, this uh, constraint violation will saturate to zero and it, uh, the constraint will be satisfied. Uh, and this means that uh, the constraint is active here. So the tower bottom stress is a limiting factor for this problem. And active constraint means that uh, the plant limit is uh, constraining uh, and regulating the control design. So uh, I'd like to uh, discuss uh, a little bit about the results and uh, I'd like to introduce some ongoing work here. A drifted function surrogate model is trained based on a massive linearizations of the open fast wind turbine models. And DFSM successfully provided a nonlinear wind turbine model behavior with the access to the state derivative functions. DFSM enabled the use of a pseudospectral drug transcription method, uh, which uh, originally OpenFest uh, cannot allow to use this method in solving the plan and control co-design problem. Model error can increase uh, when the state uh, deviates far from the linearized uh, model data set. That is the limitation of the DFSM. And our ongoing work addresses following issues and tasks. The first, uh, training DFSM without linearizing the nonlinear simulation models. Uh, we, uh, we think that DFSM can be trained uh, by just looking at the result of uh, nonlinear open fest uh, simulation trajectories. And we will try to uh, train the DFSM without linearization. And uh, second, implementing a wide range of DLC is really required to uh, have more accurate uh, design results. So we are looking at uh, multiple DLCs, uh, multiple wind profiles, and uh, even stochastic elements. And third, implementing a floating offshore wind turbine is our next, go next goal using this method. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. And this uh, entire work is uh, supported in part by the RPAE the US DOE under project titled WISE, a tool set uh, to enable control co-design of floating offshore wind energy systems. Thank you.